Good evening, my viewers. This is George On Deck with the latest edition of the George On Deck Show. I'm doing my feature tonight of Meet the Candidates, and I have a candidate who's running for the New York State Assembly in the 92nd District, Miss 94th yep. District, Miss Susie McDonough. How yes. are you, Susie? Very good, George. Thank you for having me. And I thank really you for coming it. by tonight. Yes. Um, I want my people who watch my show to get to know you better. Okay. Uh, I know you're a mother of yes, how many children? I have five children. Five my children. My little guy's 23 and my oldest is 30 and I'm actually going to be a grandma in January. No yes. way. You're much yes. too young. Oh. You're lying to no, me. No. Remember, I'm politicians so shouldn't tell any <laughs> lies. You can't be a day over 31, uh, Susie. Oh, I wish. I wish. <laughs> and uh, your roots, um, you're running in Putnam, Cortland, Yorktown, your district. Yeah. And where do you live and where have you lived all your yep. life, Susie? Well, I've, I live in Mahopac presently and Mahopac. I've actually, Mahopac, yeah. How did Ma Mahopac get its name? By the Indians, they say. Is that a true My story? Whole pack, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they actually have an article about, you know, the, because some people say May Mayapac, some people say Mahopac. Right. And if you were pretty much raised there and born there, if you're an old timer from there, it's Mahopac. Yeah. The newer people say Mayapac. Us city folks from Yonkers or the Bronx say yep. Mayapac. Mayapac, right. yes. Right. Yeah. But I've lived there my entire life, wow. over 50 so years. you went to Mayapac High School? I went to Mahopac High School. Wow. Graduated there in 79. Was it as modern as today? Uh, it's actually the same high school. No, I mean uh, the area. Oh. Uh, can you tell me something no. about a crossing of cows? Yes. No, it was not populated like it is now. When I went to school, my school bus had to stop for cow crossings. I, wow. It was very, very rural back then. Wow. Um, everyone knew each other, all the neighbors, everyone in town. It was really a great place to live, and that's why we decided, myself and my late husband, decided to raise our family there. You said your late husband. Yes. What my, happened yeah, to your husband? Jimmy, um, we got married actually his junior year of college. Wow. Everybody thought we were crazy. Right. Um, and then he actually got cancer. He got lung cancer. Wow. Never smoked. Always healthy. Swam, ran, ate healthy. He never smoked? Never smoked. Wow. No. And um, we found out, and nine months later he died. Oh, how old yeah. was he? He was 42. That must have been traumatic for you. It was a huge adjustment. You know, you, you almost can't believe it. And I, you know, I had the five children. That that's who I feel bad for. And besides being a soccer mom, a Cub Scout mom, a Girl Scout mom, what did you set up in honor of your husband? Yeah, after Jimmy passed away, we founded and set up the McDonough Foundation. Yes. And that's a foundation that helps local families deal with cancer. Because what we noticed when Jimmy got sick is that you need to relieve the stress from the patient, the person who has the cancer, but also from the family. And what we noticed, thank God I have, you know, many, many relatives and friends because I've lived there. So they were there every single day helping me get the kids wow. to practices and to school and all. And, um, but, but it was very tough emotionally for me and my children. So this foundation helps people financially or really wow. whatever they need. We've had people call that they couldn't afford a prosthetic wig. So we said, we will get it for you. People that couldn't afford their chemo treatments, we paid for their chemo treatments. There was a family whose child had cancer and we said, you know what, you guys need a night out. We gave them a night out wow. down in the city with everything. Since it's a non-for-profit, yes. um, you can mention the name of it and a contact Yeah, number. it's it's the McDonough Foundation and you actually contact me. Oh, yes, wow. it's very um, hands-on. So you let people contact you. You're very open to very your open. voters. Yes. Now tell me, what does, what makes a mother of five, um, 
who's pretty set in her ways, decide to run for public office and yeah. to serve the public yeah. now? Or have you been serving? I the have been actually. I've been on the Carmel Town Board for seven years oh, now. Wow. I'm in my second term, and I absolutely love it. You're like a council person. Yes. Uh, yeah. On the Car Car on the Carmel Town Board. Uh -huh. Yeah, and um, we've done quite a few of great things. What I what I like to do is plan for the future. And just quickly, one of the things that we did is when I got on board, I noticed that we were borrowing a lot of money right. for computers, printers, right. cars. And I approached the other town board members, and they're so great. Um, my, my other board members are wonderful to work with. And I said, let's do a 10-year plan and figure out what we're going to need and set aside money each year so we can stop the borrowing. And right now, we don't have to wow. borrow for computers, printers, some of the cars we're paying for outright. Wow. So um, it sounds it's really like you good. have a great business sense. Do you have a business degree well, or an economics I degree? I don't, but I actually owned a few businesses. Wow. Yes, with my late husband. Uh -huh. We owned um, several businesses, successful right, businesses right. in the Hudson Valley. But unfortunately, after he passed away, you know, I just wasn't able to keep up with it, you know, because some of my children were going into college, some were still in high school, some, one of them was in the middle school. So I couldn't. When I do something, I need to give 100 to 150 percent, and I wouldn't have felt it would have been right for the customers with the businesses because I wasn't going to be able to really be there for mm -hmm. them. So um, I stopped those and concentrated on getting my children through high school, middle school, and college. And they 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 are they're doing they're doing wonderful. So what made you decide to run for a state office? You've been in local office. Did you want to do more to help people? from your district? Or? Yeah, on the Carmel Town Board, I can only help the Carmel residents. And when I worked, I worked for um, Senator Ball, which I was his chief of staff. I've also worked for Senator Murphy as his constituent, director of constituent services. And what I know, knew going up to Albany, because I was up in Albany quite a bit, um, a lot actually, I saw what good you can do. And there's so much more that you can do on a state level for the majority of the people in this district than I can do just for Carmel. So I wanted to go up there and really spread out and do the good work for the people. Because what I do, which is I think very unique, is I listen to the people. And not only do I listen to them, I hear what they have to say. So when I talk to people and they listen to me, I, I bring their voices to the Carmel Town Board. Just for instance, I had someone call me, they want to raise chickens. So I was like, okay, let's meet. And we're try going to try now to possibly get a, a law allowing chickens. Now you branch this out to the state level, and I will be there to communicate with anybody who wants to call me. From day one, I've given out my cell phone, and it is my true cell phone. It's and right there. And what is your cell phone number and a website number that people yep. can reach you? If, well, if you're accessible, which you said yeah, you are. Yeah, my cell phone number is 914-403-8463. Right. Right. Okay. And um, anyone is allowed to call me. You know, if I don't pick up, that means I'm either on the George or on deck show, or I'm in a meeting. But or I, you're around I, trying to help. Or I'm your around trying to help the constituents. Yeah, I like. And what's to help your people. website address in case people the want to The website, reach you. you know what? I actually or, don't know. I think okay. I know it's Suzy Four. Then it's S U Z I. Then the number four N Y. Okay. So if you go on there, you can go to my website, and that shows you can ask questions and all, and then that'll be forwarded From to what me. What you said about the Carmel Council and trying to keep costs down. You sound like a person after my own heart. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you know it. You know I'm a veteran. I'm a Vietnam yes. veteran. Yes. But I play a lot of other roles in my community. I'm from Peekskill. We're a fine mayor. Frank Catalina is the mayor. Yep. Um, I'm the I'm the town watchdog okay. on taxes. Yes. So if you go up to Albany, how do you feel about fiscal responsibility and spending the taxpayers' money? Do you know what? I think Albany needs to do take a budget like you do you and I do. Okay. We don't extend our budget. We don't put everything that we want and wish for. We right. s you have to stay within the means of your budget. And Albany needs to do that. There is, I believe, if you ever look through the, the budget, the New York State budget, mm -hmm. it's very confusing, okay? Mm -hmm. Things are, I want to say, hidden. 
Uh -huh. And what what I don't like is the unfunded, or should I say, unfunded, unfunded mandates. mandates. Yeah, yes, the mandates I've heard that are about. not funded. That's what puts the taxes yeah, up. There's thousands of them. Really? Thousands. Wow. The schools, up, the schools, I think, probably get hit a little bit more. But with Carmel and all the areas up where we are, they have the MS4 now. Presently, they are helping us pay for it, but eventually that money is going to run out. Then the municipalities and the schools have to come up with that money. So Albany is very good at saying, hey, you know what? Peekskill, Carmel, Somers, Yorktown, you have to do this. And by the way, we're not going to pay for it, so tax your payers. Instead, what I want to happen is go through all of the unfunded mandates and start knocking them down and not have any new ones. If Albany is going to demand something from the municipalities and the schools, then they need to pay for it. So that that's one thing that, you know, it's just like an open, open book up there, you know, throwing it out. Susie, the state legislators are asking for a 46% oh, yes. uh, increase in their salary. Yeah. Um, I know they haven't had one in years. Yes. But I'm a senior and a veteran on a fixed income, mm -hmm. and we just got 0%. Uh, yeah. Social Security increase yeah. for the last two years. How do you feel about the size of that increase? That I think it's like? an outrage. I actually started a petition on my website. Really? Yeah. Yeah, because so, you, you know what? It's unheard of. No one of gets course. a 47% increase. Right. And I did, believe it or not, had a, um, an assembly member from New York City contact me and say, well, we haven't had a raise in I think it was 14 or 17 years. That's not my fault or our fault. When I say I, I mean our taxpayers. Of course. It's not our fault that they didn't give themselves either a point, half a point percent yeah, raise every year. cost of living Just increase. Just a cost of living, something. That's not our problem. But to come now to the taxpayers and say that you want a 47% increase, it's insane. And not just that, George, a lot of the legislators up there treat their seats as a part-time position. Yes. Now, I can... I've said it from day one, this will be a full-time position for you me. You won't have an outside I job. I will not have an outside this. job. Okay. And, and you're committing yourself to that. Oh, yeah. Right? Yes. Okay. I committed. It's very, like I said, I give you 100 plus 100. You will be a lawyer on the side. No. <laughs> no, no, no. I actually got, um, I don't want to say in trouble, but I was told that at Carmel Town Hall, I work too much for a, a part-time, because it's a part-time position. Oh, you're on, You work yes. too much. You have to lower your hours which I'm not going to, because I'm there for the constituents. You're going to funny now. Um, uh, I told you I'm the tax watchdog of yes. Pete Skill. Um, I actually told my mayor and council at the last meeting they deserve, well, I, they deserve a double raise. You know why? Why? The mayor makes 13000 a year, yeah. and the council only makes eight or 9000 yeah. And as you know, you get calls 24 hours a day, seven days time. a week when you're a legislator. Yeah, yeah. But you know so what? So I'm normally, I'm like you, I want to hold costs down. Yes, you have to. But you know what, George? I got into it. I decided to be the councilwoman. Right. And with that goes the responsibility of having people coming up to you. So of if course. I'm out for dinner, people do come up to me. But that's part of my job. Just like if you're a football player, you know, you're, you're well known. If you're out there and somebody's going to recognize you, you want a picture, you decided to go into that. You know, so I, I like the communication with so the people. So that's unlike someone on my condo board. They run for a, a board, mm -hmm. but when you try to speak to them, they say, call the management company. Yeah, You no. wouldn't do that. No, Or, or no. you wouldn't say, I'm just a part-time legislator. No. Don't call me in the off no. hours. And what I do is if I don't know the answer, I get back to them. I said, mm -hmm. let me look at it oh, and get back. Oh, you follow up. Yeah. yeah, well, that was one thing. When I started on the board, we got the agenda the day. We have our meetings on Wednesday, the day. And I didn't have any time to really look through it. So now what they do the Thursday prior, we get the agendas, we get the backup to the agendas. So if I have any questions, I can call the people that are on the agenda. Hey, what are you doing with this? You know, I just need to get some more information with it. And it's helped, re it's helped me because I like doing my homework. I like finding out what it is. I like to listen to people. And then together we make the best decision possible. Susie, there's several areas I'd like to ask you about. Yeah. And I know one of them you're very strong on. I'm a Vietnam veteran, a disabled Vietnam veteran. Yes, and thank veteran. you for your service, George. Thank you thank for you. thanking me. You know, it took too long 
for people to thank Vietnam, Brett. Yes. And it's something that's going to bring almost a tear to my eye uh, tonight. Mm -hmm. Four years ago, your ex-boss, Greg Ball, mm -hmm. decided to have Thanksgiving dinners for Vietnam vets and all vets yes. and honor them. When I walked into the Putnam Country Club, and you were there, yes. you were his chief of staff, and they saluted us, they had Boy Scouts and yep. Girl Scouts, and they said, welcome home. Mm -hmm. It was such a good feeling. Yeah. Uh, I was, actually even cried. <laughs> I cried. Be it was 47 years ago, yeah. and it took a long time for yes. anybody to do yeah. that. And, and the veterans deserve it. They so deserve more than that. So how do you feel about that. veterans? What's your stance on oh, veterans? Oh, my God. Veterans have a very special place in my heart. They really do. And talking about the Thanksgiving dinner, I've actually continued that. And Mr. Murphy does that, too. Right? Um, yes, he did. I don't know if it was a Thanksgiving oh. dinner. It was like a chow down or something. Oh, okay. Yes, we continued the Thanksgiving dinner with Purple Heart Homes, which I'm mm -hmm. also a director mm -hmm. board on the board with. Yes, that's very um, good. And it, this year it's going to be November 19th. Uh -huh. There'll be the two seatings again. I hope again. I'm on the list. Yes, I have you on the list. I know your table right up there. <laughs> and that ain't preferential treatment for you yes. being me on, on the show. I, no, I'm a no, combat they, that's, yes. survivor. I, I survived two rocket attacks, direct ones, in, yeah. in Vietnam. And on the second one, I was medevac back home. Okay. And I'm lucky to be here today. Yes. Some of my buddies aren't here today. Mm -hmm. but, but Yeah, with the veterans, George, I do that. Then we also took um, two buses of World War II veterans down uh -huh. to the World War II monument. Yes. That day was in Washington, in Washington D.C. You flew them down. No, there. we no? drove them down you on drove the buses. Them. I didn't drive the bus, uh -huh. but we had two coach buses. We drove down, and I it heard you was provided them with so moving. Lunch, dinner, lunch, dinner, Arlington everything. Cemetery. Yes. It, I it know a lot beautiful. about that because that's where I spent my honeymoon in Washington yes. D.C. Oh. Just to see their faces was amazing. And one of the veterans, there was, a, there was a picture on the wall, and he goes, that was my brother. He was a cameraman. Wow. And it just so touching. I, you know, I, I can't say enough and thank the veterans How enough. How about in Congress where they want to limit increases on veterans? Do you think that's the right? I shouldn't be asking you congressional bills. I, I know. I can't do anything congressional, I know, I know. but what I but can tell you level, on the state level, I don't believe the veterans are getting what they're supposed to be getting. Oh, okay. They I get don't. more state veteran I, services. You know, I, I think they should, and I've had veterans contact me that had to wait two to three months for a doctor's appointment. Wow. That's wrong. Yes. That's wrong. And one of the one things that I want to do when I get up to office in January is meet with the Veterans Affairs. And, and what I want to do, George, is bring veterans up there with me. And, and you don't want them to downsize uh, Montrose VA hospital? No, no. Would no. you be forcefully yeah. for a real estate developer not going in there and taking part of that place? Because that was suggested. It was suggested, but when I was working up in Albany, they also used a fear factor to that because that wasn't actually the whole truth. What was happening was some of the buildings that had to be taken down, they could not refurbish. So anything they took down, say they took down, let's say, 100 square feet, they had to put that 100 square feet at another building. You Susie, couldn't take it down. Susie, one dear to my heart, the American flag. Yes. We have a pro athlete right now who refuses to stand for the American yep. flag as a protest. Mm -hmm. We also have protesters who want to protest outside a cemetery uh, for the veterans. veteran cemeteries. So how do you feel on those issues? I, I'm going to be graphic. It makes me want to vomit. Uh-huh. How dare them. Now, I did speak to a veteran about that, and you know what the veteran said? What? He said, they have the right to do that because of what we did. You know, but just right. because you have a right to do it does not mean it's right. Well, I'm going to speak as a veteran, you too, know, right now. Give many, me a minute. Men and women died for this. Thank you. And if you can't stand up for it, and I'm sorry. When somebody is a pro athlete, a quarterback, mm -hmm. making $12 million a year yep. in America, yep. he has a right to protest. But not at a ball game. No. You go to a, a, a baseball game or a football game, it's the all-American game. Mm -hmm. Young children are watching yes. that. You don't teach young 
No. Children to protest against the American no, flag. No. If never, he doesn't like America, he should leave. Then he should it. leave. That's how I feel. Then he should leave, yeah. You should never be able to burn, desecrate, Thank not you. stand up, and all of my children. The red in that flag ever signifies the boys the, who died yes, for our country. Yeah, yeah. My kids know, and you know, I do have to say this in Mahopak High School, and I, I, I don't know if I've seen it too many other places. There'll be practices going on the entire campus. If there's game going on in the turf field and the national anthem comes on, every single person, even if they're on the soccer fields, the baseball fields, the tennis courts, stops what they're doing, puts their hands on their heart, and waits. One thing That's what everybody I should like do. that a local radio station does, WHUD, I think mm -hmm. you're familiar yes. with them, Casey Morabito and Mike. Yes. They have a class from like the kindergarten. I know. And they do the Pledge of, of Allegiance. Yeah, every it's day. It's adorable. Isn't yeah. it adorable? It is. How do you feel on senior issues, Susie? Senior issues are dear to my heart again because uh -huh. of my mom. You right. know, I see what they're going through. I'm very, very active with the seniors. Really? Um, I go to the senior centers uh -huh. and I speak with them and say, what, what's happening? You know, because I want to be hands-on. I've always been hands-on and I want to continue that I hear in the Mayapac assembly. Mayapac has a fine senior center. Oh, there. It's a model that others yes, wish they had. They like are a group. Yorktown and yes, some yeah. other places. Well, I visited I visited the Yorktown seniors. I've and also visited the Mahopac seniors. How about Cortland Mor Muriel Morabito Center? The Morabito center. center. Some of the senior centers I have tried to get into, but because I'm running for office, oh. they don't allow you. Oh. So to Do any they allow the other side to come in? I'm hoping not. Fair. I'm oh, hoping not. By the way, we have to mention you're in a primary. Yes. We are taping this on September 1st. It'll probably be shown this week. Okay. Um, let people know what day it is yes. and when, how they can vote it for you. It is a Republican primary, which is going to be on September 13th, and I would be honored to have people, the Republicans vote and their support on September 13th because I know I will be your assemblywoman. It's, you know, your voice is going to be and up after there. after you win, yes. uh, you will be running for the seat in November. In November, okay. yes. Yes. Um, and then take office in, Oct in uh, January. How are you about more women up in Albany? I hear there's only 12 people, 12 there's, women up in Albany. Yeah, the, there's not many women up there, and I'm hoping to, to add to it by one. Um, you know, I'm for everyone. It, I'm not just for, a, you know, I always tell people, if someone comes to me for help, I don't ask, are you a Republican? Are you a Democrat? You're are you an independent? People. Are you a male? Are you a female? I say, what is your problem? How can I help you? Now, me personally being a female, you know, I, being a mom, I've been through a lot. And I can relate to a lot, a lot of people up there. So I would be honored to be the next. And actually, I don't think this seat has ever had a female. Really? I think I will be the first female assembly person in this seat. Wow. Yes. Yeah. Which I'd be honored to. How are you for child care for, for mothers who, who have to work? Uh, would you expand that? Um, yeah, I would definitely look into it um, because I was lucky enough to be able to stay home with my children. You know, um, yeah, w which is very unique. It you know, is. It's very unique. A lot of people can't do it. Um, but child care is another thing. You don't want to stress out the parents no. having them worried about the child care and where they're going to put their child for it. So I would certainly get a hold of the women and men and dads. If they're a single dad with children, they're also going to need child care. And speak with them and say, okay, how can we help? Let's figure out a way. And then talk, you, you know, you, what I like to do is find out who already has something in the works that's working. You know, who already has a program that's working that we can almost mimic. There's no reason to reinvent the wheel if another state is already doing it. Susie, a big issue up in Albany is ethics reform. Do you yes. want to talk a little bit about ethics reform and how you stand on it if you go up Sure, to Albany? sure. Well, to begin with, I am for term limits, uh -huh. without You're a doubt. I don't term? think wow. there should be pol uh, career politicians. You don't think we should have people in Congress 40 and 50 no, years? No, no. And, and for various reasons. One, I believe, you know, if you're in there too long, you're going to take a bite at the apple mm. and it's going to go sour. 
Uh -huh. And also, there's other people that may have great ideas that want to get in there. And if somebody's been in there 40, 50 years, mm -hmm. you don't get people running against them. And I, I think that's very sad. I think that there should be people running against these people. There's a lot of talk that three people in Albany decide mostly everything. You, well, you they, don't they, really think that should be the way things Absolutely should be not. It should be open. It should be open. Mm -hmm. You know, um, there's a lot of things that go on behind closed doors up there, and it should not be. Mm -hmm. But with term limits, and then the other thing that I'm dead set against is um, if you are a politician, a legislator, and you get arrested and convicted of a crime, you lose your pension. Wow. And the reason why I say that, George, is because when we go and vote, you go and vote, I go and vote, we go Put behind my trust there. In you. You're putting trust in them, and you're giving them a certain level of power. And for them to abuse that power is wrong. So we're giving them a message, hey, we're going to vote for you. You can go up and abuse it. Then you can get arrested, you can get convicted, and we're still going to pay you. Doesn't it, seem it's right. wrong. It doesn't seem right. So take their pension and put it back into the budget. I'm not sure where yet because that's something else. You know, I don't just spit things out. I, I need to do my homework, but it definitely should not be. Because you've, you've, dis, you've dismissed the public trust, the, the yeah. trust people put it, yeah. especially if it has anything yes. to do yeah. with bribery or yep. anything. Well, I got to tell you, I have never considered myself, and I am not a politician. Uh -huh. What I am is a public servant. Wow. I am there to serve the public. The people that vote for me and get me elected for the assembly, I am the, I'm their worker. They're my bosses. So I'm serving them. I, I am not um, a politician at all. Never have been, never will. And a funny thing is, I told my brother, one of my brothers, when I got into office with the town council, Mikey, if I change, you have to let me know because I'm out of it. Now I'm telling two oh. people, my brother and another person. So when I win assembly, if I change, you let me know and I'm out of it. I don't want to change because I'm a people person, I want to listen to people, and I'm a doer. You sound like you're a doer, yes. and you sound like you're a listener. Yes. Susie, Miss Susie McDonough, <laughs> we have two minutes left in the show. Is there anything, like in a debate, you want to wrap up, uh, let people uh, know your cell phone number again, or your sure, website, or yeah, how they can Yeah, get well, one thing I do want to say, George, is that I have run a very clean, positive campaign and I do not like the negative bully oh, aspect of it. That's terrible. So I'm hoping my opponent does not. So your opponent has been doing negative he, campaigning. Well, that's I've also terrible. also heard that there's going to be a lot coming out that's very <sighs> negative. So oh. what I'm asking the people is that if you see something or read something about me, just don't take it for granted. Call me, 914-403-8463, and we can discuss it. Miss Susie McDonald, uh, I wish you George, good luck. George, thank you. I really appreciate it. I'm happy that you appreciate it. And I'll see you it. on the 19th. And, and, and in the interest of fairness, I always invite the opposing point of view or anyone who was running this year to come on my show. Great. Thank, thank you. Thank you again, Susie. I appreciate and, it, George. And good luck. Thank you. Thank you.